Thursday evening. I was sitting in my office, smoking a cigarette as I flipped through that week's newspaper. Three murders, two kidnappings, and who knows how many robberies. Not that unusual for a city of this size, but it made me wonder why business had been so slow. Being a private investigator in a city like this, I should have been out that night, photographing a cheating husband or rummaging through someone's garbage. But instead I found myself sitting in the office waiting for the phone to ring. She knocked on the door once before letting herself in. She was tall, red-headed, legs for days. I watched her as she strolled in, wondering if she was in the right place. Mr. Norwood? Glenn's fine. Who are you? Stone, Callista Stone. I hear that you're discreet. Yeah, I guess you could say that. What's the job? Let me guess. Your husband's been staying out late? No, no. I'm I'm married. I could see the ring on her finger, but I guess she wasn't so bright. I've been hearing things lately. At my house. Things keep moving around and I hear bumps in the night. So what? You think you've got a ghost? She looked straight up at me then, her green eyes large and pleading. I'm not crazy, Mr. Norwood. I swear I'm not. Thumps and scratches. I hear them all through the night, and when I wake up, my clothes are moved, the furniture is shifted. I know I'm not crazy. Please, you have to help. So you think there's someone breaking in? Why don't you call the police? I'm a PI man. I can't arrest a burglar. She looked away again, and I could tell I had upset her. I can't. I can't call the police. Please, I just want you to find out what it is, who it is. Well, business was slow. And something about that silver watch and designer dress told me that she could pay. All right, write down the address. I'll be there in a few hours. Her house was in the rich part of town, just a few blocks from the town hall and park. Real nice neighborhood, full of private schools, a real suburban paradise. I sat in my car, just a few houses down. If there was someone missing with Miss Stone, I didn't want to scare him off. It was nearly 4 a.m. when I noticed something stir in the big dark house I'd parked in front of. Real Victorian design all pointy roof and huge windows. A dark figure was lurking near the rear. I shifted lower in the driver's seat, hoping whoever this guy was, he wouldn't notice me. I watched as what looked like a man crept along the street, crossing when he'd reached opposite Miss Stone's house. So, that was her ghost. I pulled out my camera, hoping to catch a photo, before realizing there wasn't enough light and a flash would let him know I was here. I didn't want a confrontation now, so instead I watched him, quietly, as he crept along the outside of her house. He was there for nearly an hour, just walking around and occasionally scratching up against one of the walls, like some kind of animal. Then he turned around and started walking back to the dark house where I was parked. I lowered myself further down, hoping he wouldn't see me. I could hear his footsteps as he went by my car and felt his shadow as he passed under the flickering street light. When I was certain he was gone, I sat back up in my seat. I looked at the house. I noticed a movement in one of the huge windows. An old woman peering at me from behind the curtain. Creepy. I started the car and moved in front of Miss Stone's house. It was nearly sunrise. She'd be interested to hear about her ghost, whoever he was. I awoke to find Miss Stone tapping at my window. 
She was wearing a floral dress with a spotted apron, an oven mitt still on her right hand. Did you want some breakfast, Mr. Norwood? I'd like to hear of your findings. I followed her inside, and my stomach ached at the smell of waffles. I was so hungry I almost didn't notice the man's hat hanging by the door, or the obvious wedding photos on the mantel. She showed me through to the kitchen, where I sat myself down at the table. Nice house. You live alone, you said? Yes, yes. Which is why I'm curious as to how the sugar bowl moved from the breakfast table to the kitchen bench overnight. She gestured to the sugar bowl sitting by the kitchen stove. Mm -hmm. She was watching me, expectantly. I didn't know what to say. I think I found your intruder, Mrs. Stone. But he didn't come inside last night. She didn't look happy. She had pulled the waffles out of the oven, and I was hungry. There was a man. He lives down the street. But he didn't come inside. He lurked around the house for an hour, but he never left my sight. But if he didn't come inside, how did the sugar bowl move? You sure it moved? <sighs> I'm sure. I'm sure of it. I've been paying extra attention, Mr. Norwood. I know I have. It was on the breakfast table right there, and this morning it was moved. Oh, Lord! Are you sure this man didn't come inside? Certain. Maybe you can tell me who he is. He lives in the big house down the street. Green paint. Kind of creepy looking. She frowned, thoughtfully, a little wrinkle appearing between her eyebrows. Old Mrs. White lives there, by herself. I'm quite sure. Are you sure the man lived there? He wasn't fooling around in her house as well. I hadn't thought of that. I'll go check it out after the coffee. Maybe she and I can have a chat. No answer. It was early, and I hadn't seen Mrs. White leave. But who knew how long I had slept for, or if she had ducked out while Mrs. Stone was serving me breakfast. Well, that didn't stop me from having a look around. I walked to the back of the house, through to the backyard. Nothing suspicious, but there was a set of cellar doors near the back. I noticed that the chain holding them closed appeared to be quite new. Not a speck of dust or rust. That was different. Hello, is someone in there? I loosened the chains, just enough to get a look inside, but without opening the doors. I wasn't an idiot. I peered through the small gap and was met with a foul smell, like rotten eggs and flesh and shit. I tried not to gag, and then I spotted him, hiding back in the corner, barely in view. That was him, the man I saw last night. But in the dim street lights, I couldn't see just how frightening this man looked. Dirty, disgusting, deranged looking. His clothes all torn up, his face all disproportioned, like some kind of monster. Though for all I knew, it was because he obviously hadn't showered in a decade. I had seen enough. I stepped back and tightened the chains once more. I didn't know what old Mrs. White was up to. But I didn't care. Yes? Oh, Mr. Norwood, did you talk to Mrs. White? No. Uh, sorry, Mrs. Stone. May I come in and use your phone? Uh, sure. Of course. I began to dial the police, but Mrs. Stone hung up as soon as it began to ring. You can't bring the police here. Why not? Oh, God. Here came the tears. Oh, please, please, you can't bring them here. They're not going to come here. I'm sending them to Mrs. White. Oh, Lord, Lord, what happened? I told her the story of the man I saw, but I was certain he was the one sneaking into her house. He had to be taken away to a mental hospital or, or something. Are you sure they won't need to come here? Why are you so scared of them coming here, Mrs. Stone? I just don't want them here, okay? I'm paying you for your discretion, Mr. Norwood. 
I'll call him from my office, all right? I won't even mention your name. Yeah, we got him, Glenn. Thanks for the tip. Don't know what that old lady was doing. We think he might be her son or something. Why was he locked up like that? Yeah, who knows. He's insane, though. Maybe she figured locking him up was better than admitting her kid was a lunatic. Whatever, we got him, thanks to you. Yeah, no problem. I'll call you if I hear anything else. Another job done, and a quiet Friday evening ahead of myself. I was about to pour myself a scotch when the office door opened. Mr. Norwood? In she came, all dolled up and looking fine. <clears throat> I told you, call me Glenn. Glenn, I wanted to thank you for your help and your discretion. It's my job. Drink? Actually, I was wondering if you might join me for dinner. I wanted to thank you properly. I would have been happy just with the money she had promised. But damn, she looked good. I'll have the lobster. Veal Parmesan, thank you. It was so kind of you to join me, Mr. Norwood. Glenn, and it's no problem. Though I can't help wondering how your husband would feel. Husband? I don't... Your ring. His things are all over your house. I've been addressing you as Mrs. Stone. She looked sick. I hoped I'd still get paid. <clears throat> he left. We're getting a divorce. He met another woman and left without much notice. Uh, I haven't gotten used to the idea yet. It's a good thing, really. He wasn't a very kind man. He was cruel, actually. I'm good to be rid of him. And you don't want the police at your house because... He was one of them, for a long while. I don't like them around, they remind me of him. That didn't sound right to me. I had never heard of an Officer Stone. But I decided it was good enough. I wasn't going to risk the company of a beautiful woman over something small like that. Do you like to dance, Miss Stone? It's Callista, and I'd love to. A few too many drinks later, and I was past the point of driving. We took a cab back to hers, stumbling in during the early hours of the morning. You're a lot of fun, mister. <laughs> she was young and beautiful, and had her arms around my neck. You are gorgeous. I was so smitten, I didn't even notice the wedding photo drop off the mantle, or the sugar bowl slowly gliding across the breakfast table. We should go upstairs. Yeah, yeah, we should. What was that? You bitch. Who is that? You did this, fucking slut. What's happening? She held tight to me, expecting me to protect her. But from what? I didn't know what was happening. I watched as the glass from the wedding photo slowly rose into the air. It's him. He wants revenge. Revenge? He hurt me, Glenn. I had to stop him. I couldn't take it anymore. I had to... <sighs> the glass flew at her. So quickly, I couldn't do a thing to stop it. She's mine. 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 She's I had no idea what was happening, but I wasn't going to stick around to find out. I carried her in my arms, grabbing her car keys as I ran out the door. Her car was parked in the driveway. I opened the back door. Nothing but blankets on the back seat. I lifted her and lay her across them. He got me back. He got me back. Just hold on. I'll get you to the hospital. Whatever was happening, I just had to get her out of there. I had more drinks than I could count that night, but I was dead sober in that moment. I just had to get her to the hospital. I would sort the rest out after. But as I turned the corner, 
I was met with one strange sight. Town Hall, up in flames. Half a dozen police cruisers and a few fire trucks working to put it out. I spotted Mrs. White, the little old lady, in cuffs by one of the cars. Guess she didn't like her son being taken away. And coming in fast, an ambulance. Thank God. I pulled over and jumped out, waving them down. Norwood? He hurt me. He hurt me. She needs a doctor. Quick, help me get her out. What, what happened, Glenn? Oh, what's that smell? I hadn't noticed it before. I was too terrified and panicked. But I could now. The whole car, it reeked of that rotten smell. He hurt me. It was you. It was you. I don't know why she was staring at me. I really wish she wasn't. What's going on here, Glenn? The other police officers were crowding around now, while the paramedics slowly removed the glass from Callista's wound. I watched as they made their way into her car, examining the blood-soaked blankets that covered the back seat and floor. I didn't think Callista bled that much, or at least, not through her back. What the hell is this? They pulled back the sheets, and my heart sank. We have a body! Call in crime scene! Now! So that's where her husband ran off to. I felt the officer's hand on my back, pressing me up against the car. That unfamiliar feeling of cold cuffs around my wrists. Great. Wait, it's not my car. I don't know what's going on. Sorry, Glenn, but I gotta do my job. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say or do can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. Starring Bo and Shalini Nestor, with voices from Chester Ward and Stephen McCracken. Written and produced by Aisha Huntman. Project Supervisor, Mitchell Whitelaw. Featuring music from Natasha Pearson. Produced for the Faculty of Art and Design, University of Canberra, 2015.